Reddit is the latest social media platform to crack down on hate speech. It banned a controversial forum called The Donald, created for supporters of President Trump. It had more than 790,000 users uh, and was kind of a, a foundation for Trump supporters. I'm confident that Reddit could sway elections, he told me. We wouldn't do it, of course, and I don't know how many times we could get away with it, but if we really wanted to, I'm sure Reddit could have swayed at least this election, this once. There's no hiding it. Political discussion on social media has, for the past several years, become less free. This isn't my opinion, it's an observable fact. Websites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and others have tightened their terms of service to the point that large swaths of speech are completely outlawed. It doesn't matter how factual the speech is, if these companies or the NGOs pressuring them deem it to be wrong think, it's liable to be deplatformed. To be clear, I'm not referring to illegal threats of violence, but rather much of the controversial speech that is blanketed under the term hate speech. And unfortunately, the majority of this censorship has been towards the political right. These policies aren't uniform, and there is some difference in the way social media companies police their users, but the general trend remains the same. You, the viewer, should care about this because tech oligarchs are currently affecting your view of the world. And they have much more control over people's perception than many seem to think. That leads us to the main subject of this video, and one of the most egregious censors, the website Reddit. First, a little background. Reddit is a news sharing and discussion website that currently ranks as the 7th most visited website in the United States and the 18th most visited in the world. Estimates put it at about 400 million monthly active users, which gives it quite a bit of political and cultural influence. The website works by users upvoting posts, which in theory is supposed to democratically decide which posts get to its front page. I say in theory because the website is rife with manipulation from both outside and inside forces. The site is also divided into tens of thousands of different communities called subreddits devoted to different topics. Now I'll get to the point. Each community has its own moderators that can censor as they wish, and above them there are administrators that can do the same. This doesn't sound like a problem on paper until you realize that most subreddits are governed by the same individuals, and they themselves are in cooperation with the administrators. The effect of this is that over time, Reddit has become more and more of an echo chamber controlled by a cabal that decides what its users can hear and will be able to say. And a quick look at the largest subreddits on Reddit shows exactly what they want their users to be seeing and saying. Today, Reddit has become infamous for its left-wing bias and one-sided rule enforcement. For example, Antifa can openly dox and harass police, but if a regular user were to say they don't agree with gay marriage, they would risk a ban. No story better exemplifies Reddit's descent into censorship over the years than that of the Donald Trump subreddit, R the Donald. Today the subreddit is banned, but at its peak it had hundreds of thousands of users who were very involved in politics. With the 2020 presidential election come and gone, and it looking as if Donald Trump will not be president come 2021, it's the perfect time to analyze what happened to this forum. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax as we explore the rise and fall of R. The Donald. The date is June 28th, 2015. On this day, a new subreddit is created that will go on to change Reddit and America forever. The community takes the name The Donald and describes itself as a perpetual rally for supporters of Donald Trump, who had recently announced his candidacy for President of the United States. I am officially running. As time went on and Trump's bid for the presidency gained momentum, so too did R. The Donald. Through 2015 and 2016, the forum became a hotspot for Trump supporters to share news, memes, and more. The users were united by many common beliefs. Support for Donald Trump, a rejection of mass immigration and the many different forces pushing it, support for freedom of speech and gun rights, and a general desire to change many of the negative things that America has experienced for the past several decades, including endless wars in the Middle East and a Republican establishment that does little for its voters. 
The Donald became a trending community many times in early 2016. Some of its memes were so popular they were being retweeted by Donald Trump himself. In fact, a study conducted by Cornell University later found that the Donald was one of the most efficient places on the internet at spreading its memes. Trump's 2016 campaign manager Brad Parscale said he was browsing the subreddit every day. And during the summer of 2016, Donald Trump did a Q&A there that was very popular. Keep all of these facts in mind because they will make the events of the future even more important. Now before and during all of this, news outlets like the Huffington Post, BuzzFeed News, Now This, and other outlets that are essentially glorified partisan left-wing rags, were putting out mountains of propaganda with most of Reddit reposting and regurgitating it all. Users of the Donald were all too aware of this, and saw the community and places like it as a way to fight back the growing tide. And boy did they bring the fight. Reddit itself at the time was a very liberal website, and while it still allowed right-wing content, it was already clear that its administrators and moderators were growing more and more hostile to an open exchange of ideas. This hostility would accelerate very quickly going forward. Now all of this being said, it would be a dark day in June 2016 that truly changed things for Reddit and the Donald. Breaking news out of Orlando, the terror attack. Right now at least 20 are dead, maybe more. The shooter also dead. Police say that he was well prepared. And at the center of it all, a lone gunman who in the middle of that massacre called 911 to pledge allegiance to ISIS. The gunman, Omar Mateen, was an American born in New York, and tonight we now know he was known to the FBI. The 2016 Orlando shooting by an ISIS sympathizer would go on to be a significant day for Reddit. ISIS in 2016 was a growing threat responsible for promoting terrorist attacks throughout the world. Trump had previously called for a shutdown of Muslims entering the U.S. after the 2015 San Bernardino attacks, where Islamic terrorists killed 14 Americans and injured 24 others. These factors are significant because the subject of Islamic terrorism was a hot issue in the upcoming 2016 election, and both the moderators of the Donald and the administrators of Reddit were aware of this. However, it would actually be Reddit's response to the shooting that generated massive controversy. Ironically, when the shooting was first being reported, most of Reddit jumped on it in hopes that it would be a white Christian Trump supporter as the shooter. Once it was becoming apparent that the shooter was a Muslim, the attitude completely changed. Reddit's default and premier news subreddit, R News, immediately began to heavily censor the story and any information about the shooter. Thousands of posts and comments were removed despite violating no rules. This trend also occurred across the entire website. When responding to the backlash, one of the R News mods even told a user to themselves. The backlash to the mod reaction to the shooting was so severe that over 85,000 people unsubscribed from R News that day alone. This is where the Donald came in. Its moderators refused to censor the story and even used Reddit's pin function to ensure updates would be on its front page. And since they were the only major subreddit giving a platform to the story, updates on the Donald started to dominate the front page of Reddit as well. By subscribers gained, this was the Donald's highest day ever. Due to the Donald's existence, Reddit's attempt to suppress the story had completely backfired. And they would never forget this. Within 24 hours of the Orlando shooting, Reddit's administrators sprang into action to immediately start censoring the Donald. It started by changing the algorithm that determined what appeared on Reddit's front page. When asked if the change was about the Donald, Reddit's CEO Steve Huffman, or Spez, wrote the following. Many people will ask if this is related to R the Donald. The short answer is no, we have been working on this change for a while but I cannot deny that their behavior hastened its deployment. We have seen many communities like the Donald over the years, ones that attempt to dominate the conversation on Reddit at the expense of everyone else. This undermines Reddit, and we are not going to allow it. This was, of course, just a long-winded excuse. Not a day later, another Reddit administrator directly mocked Donald Trump for his so-called tiny hands, 
showing that anti-Trump animus was certainly playing a part in their decisions. This became even more clear after the 2016 election had concluded. It was becoming recognized that the online energy R. The Donald had provided had helped push Trump over the finish line. Shortly after the election, Reddit CEO Spez began to maliciously edit comments on The Donald to insult The Donald's moderators. He even went into the website's code to do this. The edits the CEO made would nowadays get users suspended if they had made them. Spez later made an apology post and stated that his emotions got the better of him, but the ordeal proved once and for all that Reddit had a failure to separate political opinions from business. But it got worse. On November 30th, messages between Reddit CEO, anti-Trump moderators, and anti-Trump administrators were leaked by an insider. The leaks revealed the intent to get rid of the Donald. Just because he messed up and made Reddit look bad doesn't mean he can't still make the right move and ban them, one moderator said. Spez replied, I think we need to figure out the Donald without banning them, because there will be another. One moderator suggested, Hire me as your temporary replacement. I'll ban the Donald, put proper policies in place to eliminate future communities, take all the flack, then you can take over again. Another moderator wrote, you're letting it become a white nationalist recruiting ground that helped influence an election in favor of a dangerous demagogue by organizing and spreading false news, harassing reporters, and radicalizing lonely white people. Spez again replied, Banning it would create a mess, and we can fix this in a more sustainable way. The rest of the hundreds of messages were the administrators and moderators begging Spez to ban or quarantine the Donald. And though the Donald was ultimately not banned yet, as 2017 began, it soon became clear that this would be the year Reddit completely abandoned the concept of free speech and open debate. Through 2017, our alt-right, our poll, our European nationalism, and several others were banned on flimsy premises. Keep in mind, not a single major left-wing subreddit was banned during the same time period. On top of this, at the end of February 2017, Reddit once again modified its front page to ensure the Donald could not appear on it. This applied to no other political candidate's subreddit except for Donald Trump's. By May, Reddit stepped up its censorship once again by placing special sanctions on the Donald that applied to no other subreddit. The most absurd requirement of all was banning screenshots and links to other posts on Reddit. When the Donald's moderators objected to these targeted standards, three of them were outright removed from their positions. Reddit was now going to use force to ensure that the subreddit did as they said. From this point on, it is viewed by many that the Donald was officially declawed and could not generate the energy that it did in 2016 again. In a prophetic comment, a now-deleted user responded to the removal of the moderators by saying, Imagine how pathetic this board is gonna look though. You're gonna hit our all and it's gonna be filled with 50 different anti-Trump subs all botted to the hilts. And how accurate this prediction was. In any case, in spite of these removals, the Donald continued on to do what it could. This leads us into 2018 and the US midterms. Toward the beginning of the year, a now infamous interview with Reddit CEO was released, where he claimed that Reddit could indeed sway an election if they wanted to. With all the work they had done to hinder the Donald going into the 2018 midterms, they were indeed already doing so. Now, let's pause for a moment and look at the state of Reddit by the 2018 midterms. Every major subreddit was controlled by a small group of moderators who were all similar, if not identical, politically. Communities like R Politics, R News, and R Picks, while having neutral names, were in reality complete echo chambers. Their leadership could be summarized as simply as this anti Trump, anti Christian, and anti conservative. And due to the nature of Reddit, this had severe consequences. The only posts and sources that were allowed were those that met this worldview, and many users continued to use these forums none the wiser. If Reddit had an Overton window, Bernie Sanders was in the middle, and this also had consequences for the Donald. Many users and now subreddits were calling for them to not only be censored as they already were, but to be outright banned. Amidst this pressure in 2019, Reddit CEO admitted in a comment that the Donald was not in violation of any of Reddit's content policies. He said this in his statement, Banning a large political community that isn't in violation of our policies would be hugely problematic, not just for Reddit, but for our democracy generally. This statement was an absolute joke in light of the censorship that had already been foisted upon the Donald. But the biggest coup de grace was still to come. Earlier in the year, Reddit had revamped its quarantine policy, 
which was essentially a policy to make subreddits much harder to access than others. It was an old function that had not really been used since the inception of the website. However, they had finally found a use for it, censoring their political enemies. And they would go on to do so to the Donald in June 2019. The community was quarantined for its so-called violent remarks about police officers. Of course, such comments can be found on Reddit every day to this day, including an entire subreddit that is dedicated to cop hatred, but what's logical consistency to people whose goal is simply political censorship? The comments Reddit used as an excuse for the quarantine had almost no attention, and made up precisely 11 comments out of tens of thousands that were posted to the Donald every single day. The quarantine meant that links from the Donald were far harder to access, the Donald was far harder to find in the search, and the forum could no longer be used from the Reddit app. If removing the Donald from the front page was the first blow, this quarantine was the kill shot. In another interview in July 2019, Reddit CEO essentially admitted that the Donald was being quarantined not because of violating any policies, but because they had unpopular opinions on Reddit. He told Vox the following, Finding our voice on these issues was a real challenge because we really had to test our values and find ways to justify doing what we knew in our hearts to be the right thing, but wasn't supported by our policies, or wasn't supported by our previous words. In other words, Reddit's administration had decided that them disagreeing with something would be enough to ban it, regardless of content policies. This had always been the case with the moderators of Reddit, but the administration itself declaring it was new ground. This logic would be important for Reddit going forward to the present day. By December 2019, the moderators of the Donald had given up any notions that they'd ever be unquarantined or receive fair treatment from Reddit. They decided to set up their own website called the Donald.win and encouraged all of the Donald's users to migrate there. Posts on the Donald on Reddit were turned off by the moderators and by early 2020, the subreddit was vacant. All the new activity was on the Donald.win, which is still active to this very day. The Donald, after years of censorship, finally escaped the clutches of Reddit's administrators. However, this came at the cost of losing any potential growth which would have come from staying on Reddit. But even after the Donald's exodus from Reddit, it was still not enough for the left-wing activists which came to dominate the website. They wanted their petty victory and to finally, after years, see the Donald banned. They would get their wish in June 2020 when Reddit outlawed so-called hate speech and banned over 2,000 mostly right-leaning subreddits, including the vacant Donald. Reddit's total descent into the cesspit that it is today was finally complete. Very tellingly, initially Reddit's new hate speech rules explicitly allowed for hate speech against white people and Christians. I have to assume that because of possible legal repercussions, the wording of these rules were later changed. But it certainly shows you the sentiment that the Reddit administrators have. And regardless of the wording of the rules, so-called hate speech is used against Christians and white people all across Reddit every day. For example, if you go to the Reddit Atheist Forum, it is nothing but non-stop anti-Christian hatred day in and day out. But this, of course, is simply allowed. Rules for thee, not for me. So, what do these events show us, and why are they important? Well, firstly, this is a case study in modern big tech political censorship. The first high-profile case was of course Alex Jones in mid-2018, though groups like American Renaissance were already being censored as early as 2017. And since these examples, the scale and number of bans has only expanded. This kind of censorship has consequences. It does, as Reddit CEO admitted, sway elections. When tens of millions of people, such as Reddit's user base, are only seeing one side's opinions amplified, and another side's opinions nowhere to be found, that has a profound effect on their view of the world, and especially of their view of politics. If you were to log on to Reddit today, you would find it extremely difficult to find a conservative, let alone a pro-Trump, view of the world. I think you can imagine how this affects how people vote and how they use their positions of power to affect the world. And as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, this is a problem across all social media, but Reddit takes it to the next level in essentially a worst case scenario. Tech companies have forced us into a situation where we need legislation or a judicial decision to keep their censorship in line. And whether you're right wing or someone who simply supports a free exchange of ideas, something needs to be done about these tech companies. However, there is some good news. 
There are currently many rising alt tech websites like BitChute and Parler that are allowing people who have been banned for hate facts to spread the truth elsewhere. Though this shouldn't be seen as the main solution, as these companies face their own problems with payment processors and having far smaller audiences. At least for now. At the end of the day, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that the absence of R. The Donald during the 2020 election played a part in Trump's defeat. If they had been left alone to be in the same position they were in 2016, who knows what they could have been capable of by now. The tech elites and their acolytes ensured we will never know. R. The Donald wasn't banned because it was especially bad, it was banned because it was especially effective. Establishing a situation where the entire conversation online is not controlled by a few tech elites is something future generations will thank us for. Hopefully we can rise to the occasion. This has been PAX. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.